The walk back home was arduous. With each step, my unease had grown. Until... They refused to look at each other. Did they have another fight? Are you both okay? No. We're having a disagreement. There is only one solution and that's all there is to it. I leaves abruptly and my guess is that she's gone back to her room. Violence is not the answer. She wants to fight? Yeah, and this only makes me worried. I'm going out for a bit. What will you do? I'll try to create a diversion, a subtle trail. Perhaps it will take the bait and track us away from here. Avoiding them entirely is the ideal outcome. What can I do to help? Be with her. She will feel better being with you. I understand. If I do not see you when I return, I wish you a good night. Same. Sleep well, Jinha. Uh, are you still there? Why are you here? Because I want to be with you. I do not want you here. Why? Because I do not want you to see me this way. I've seen you angry before, don't worry. I try to laugh, but it does a little to dispel the air tension permeating the room. Are you mad at Jinha? Yes and no. She cannot see how I see things. Tell me about it. When my own life is on the line, there is only one choice, is there not? Every living creature will bear fangs when faced with the need for self-preservation. Do you really see no other option? Why is it that I must run from them? Why should they determine how I should live my life? We are more than aware of what their plans likely entail. I refuse to be imprisoned and used by them. They will not take me without a fight. Then how about if I try to talk to them? My survival alone should give some weight to my words. I can just say you left after saving me. But if you do that, you confirm my existence to them. The odds are better if we play the hands that say, I'm not real, just a legend in the wind. Sadly, my current powerlessness only dampens our odds at success. Then we should rely on Jinha, as she got the best chance of success. I look so solemn, for once her eyes seem to resemble clear water instead of the depths of, mur of a murky pond. For once I feel like I'm able to read her. But without any warning, I, find I suddenly find myself in her embrace. Should anything drastic happen, you will need to forgive me. What will you do? I do not know, but I care about you the most even more than myself. Your safety is my highest priority now. I hug her back. I think it'll work out. Quite the optimist. One of the many things I love about you. Alright, we should sleep now. Best to rest up for tomorrow, and then we should enjoy our day at least and prepare. You are correct. Then let us return to your room. Somehow we were able to fall asleep, but... If I only I'd realized the weight of those words of hers truly held. The morning was the worst yet. A dark mood seemed to have settled in, and I could barely taste the food that Jinha worked extra hard on. We tried to stay casual and relaxed by avoiding the topic, but in the end, it was too overwhelming. Once we discussed all we could, we waited. We just waited. Waited for the sun to move across the sky. That serious face you've got worries me. I feel like there's something else you'd like to tell me. Well, in the events, things do not go as well as we'd hope. I do not want her hands to be stained with needless deaths ag ever again. Defending yourself is one thing, but... For some reason, what I had told me last night flashes through my mind. Oh, yes, I agree, but I'm sure we can prevent that from happening. And if she acts, it'll only be because things have deteriorated to the point we're in danger, so... This is exactly why I fear for the worst. Jinha cuts me off with an uncharacteristic grim expression. If it comes down to it, I may have to seal her. Th th that's just too cruel. I know. But that aside, should anything happen to me, I want you to promise me you will protect I from herself. 
Why would you say it like that? Promise me. I will only promise you that if you promise me that we will try everything to stop I if it gets that bad, and that you will protect yourself too. Got that? She finally cracks <laughs> a smile. I promise. You ready to go? Got the story straight? Yes, the story is already decided. Two disciples at a personal retreat, no serpent beings. For some reason, I'm still a bit nervous about all of it. Why, only Jin has going to going out to see them. It's just a feeling, I... I see. Off you go. I'll see you both soon, hopefully with good news. Looks like you can't settle down. I keep telling myself Jin has very resourceful, so she'll definitely pull through. I hope so too, but should the situation turn sour, no single human can go up against an army. Even a makeshift one. What should we do? We shall go too, in secret. Even if her priority is no bloodshed, mine is that no blood shall be spilled from either of you. Should I stay here? No, you will follow behind me. I need to be able to reach you should we need to escape altogether. How is your tree climbing? <laughs> what used to be our favorite walk has now become rather surreal. Is this really where it all finally ends? Will I get to stop running and hiding for good? Now I treats me like a baby cub, hiding me from danger in a tree to wait for its guardian. She sure gets all her ideas from nature's, huh? From my vantage point, I am able to spot them. They come slowly but surely, and the crowd of bodies grow even bigger in the distance. Jinhai greets them as they talk, but I can only guess as to what is happening. Half of the group seems confused, the others seem angry, if the way they shout at her while gesturing towards the path back home is any indication. Perhaps they just want to investigate and rest at her place. I spot on trying his darndest, darn hardest between the two parties. How well can we li how, how well can our lie hold up? Sh shoot. I stop myself from falling, but the branch makes a clear noise as it tumbles. Some of the men look spooked, others peer suspiciously towards my hiding spot. Maybe she can tell them that the forest is haunted. Despite her best efforts, the commotion only grows louder, and not just because they're moving closer. Jinha positions herself ahead of them. Come on down, my disciple. Coming. I climb down the tree, so many things running frantically through my head. Once my feet hit the ground, I turn to Jinha with my two hands in prayer form and bow. Did you need something from me? <laughs> Is that... is that who I think it is? Well, I'll be damned. Isn't that Lin? Get on over here. He's gotta see this. Soon enough, An comes jogging to the front, facing me with the saddest expression. Is that you? Blessed be the serpent gods who kept you safe. While his voice masks everything he's feeling, his eyes ask me with a touch of panic, Why are you still here? Yes, it is I, I who survived the pit trial and now stand here before you. I stand strong, doing my best to hide the fear that sends goosebumps crawling all over my skin. Hooray. So she's here. That means that old man really did see a white serpent creature. Finally, we can go home soon. Yes, please do, without I. The excitement rises to a fever of pitch, people calling and shouting. I glance at Jinha, who signals me to continue acting my part. I am so sorry to disappoint you all. Yes, the night I was saved by someone. Days later, I awoke to find myself in the care of this monk at a retreat just above us. She found me near the river, but I was alone. They look over to her, unsure. You said that there was no serpent god, but she is the living proof there is one. To be, f to be fair to Disciple Lin, she said that she hadn't seen what had happened to her. I have lived on this mountain for many years, and I have yet to see a serpent god or being that you speak of. Rumors are very prevalent, however. They say sometimes those who stray into the region's peculiar dense fog are not returned qu quite the same. Something in there causes the men to go mad. If there is truly a supernatural being, whatever it may be, is no benevolent god. A wave of unused chatter 
An a wave of uneasy chatter ripples through the throng as she calmly angles at their superstitious nature. Even in the midst of all this, I can't help but think that Jinha really is impressive. No way, someone's gotta be lying here. Back there, those men swore that they saw a serpent god recently. It was a pandemonium in that vi village. It even killed a man. I mean, sure, I'm sure he did something to warrant it. It's the god we all pray to, after all. The man who spoke in trails off, and I spot the aggravation on several faces giving way to a slightly guilty unease. I have traveled these woods many times, and I assure you that there is nothing like that has ever deigned to grace me with its presence. Plenty of regular snakes, however, some who carry intense vellum, venom that I carry for my apothecary. Sounds of disappointment echo from the crowd. Maybe it's time we end this futile journey already. I, for one, would like to head home. Did we not search this entire mountain already just to find nothing? Our family misses us, and being away for so long does nothing to help the situation with the harvest. An is trying his darn hardest to convince them. Though there is some protest, his logic seems to win them over in the end. This actually worked? Then we have it. Let us return to our camp and leave bright and early tomorrow. The men start to turn around and head back down the mountain. I start to lose sight of the group's far end as they disappear into the forest. On is the last to leave as he turned to join the stragglers. Hey, On, what are you doing? Take your bride with you. Yeah, you can't just leave her behind. What kind of horrible husband are you? But she's already got a life here with the monk. I can't just come in and... Nonsense. She is of our village. She is yours and your responsibility. What are you going to tell her mother? Sorry, ma'am. Your daughter's alive, but I left her with some monk. Right, Lynn? I'm sure you miss your family. Uh, uh, I... Um... She has declared herself to the faith in our work. She cannot just leave. Now, now. Don't be unreasonable. She is to be wedded to him. She needs to return to us. This man is far more unkind than the last one who spoke. Yes, her family is waiting for her. Isn't this a special circumstance? You can find another disciple anyways. I cannot force her to stay. She has to make that choice. Then it is settled. She will come as she is told. I told you, she must be the one that makes that choice. Some of the men step for the earlier belligerent mood from earlier resurfacing. I get the sense that they're not going to humor Jinha any longer. I don't want to return. I must finish my work here. Oh, and you'll say that to your family? Or what's left anyways? And to your husband-to-be? Come now, stop fussing. The spark of fear that sweeps through me at the offhand comment about my family ignites to a blazing panic when I feel a rough hand grab grabbing my wrist. As you pull me forward, I can only stumble along, shaking like a leaf from a torrent of bad memories. What was that? Ugh. My wrist is immediately released. I snap back to the present at the snarling wind and realize that the man grabbed me has his fingers broken. Oh no. Even so, I can only feel relief as I appeals before us like a force of nature. What happened? A few of the men hear the commotion and turn around. In a chain effect, the clearing is soon crowded once again. You tried your way. Now it's my turn. He was a slut. Where did she come from? Well, well, maybe this wasn't a complete fruitless visit after all, eh? I, you will not be taking her. I stands between me and the men, heedless of the leering. Jinha also immediately moves in front of me with her arms raised warily. Neither of them face me, instead focusing all their attention on who looks to be a couple of seconds away from breaking out into a complete violent mob. I apologize that I was not convincing enough. I'm sorry, it's all my fault. She broke my feet fingers. Teach her a lesson, damn it. And the clearing explodes into motion. I gracefully dodges all the men attempting to grab her and pushes them in punishes them in return with her fists and feet. She doesn't hold back. The inhuman strength in her blows forcefully, sending them flying. Some even crash into the surrounding trees with a loud smack. Spears are thrown, arrows begin to fly, but all land at her feet as the wind moves unnaturally around her. Don't apologize, you did not want to go with them. But the remainder of those who'd left earlier return as the ruckus grow. If the mood earlier was uneasy, this is the worst case scenario. Should we run? We're leaving. We're not. They will chase us and then what? I, please stop. Hmm. 
What is she? Her eyes. That red glow. <laughs> it's a demon. She's the, she's the one making everything go wrong. You've both done your best. Now it's my turn to end this once and for all. Damn it. I desperately grab onto Jinha. Wait, don't seal her. Lin, let me go or else. And then... Everyone in the area is encased in ice. Not a single person was spared but me. Jinha. I bang on the ice trying to break through. Can you hear me? I grab the biggest rock I can find and swing with all my strength. Frozen solid, not a single sign of responsiveness from her. I, why did you freeze everyone? This is the best measure. How could you say that, Jinha and the others? Is this my fault? If I hadn't stopped Jinha from sealing her... Well, what do you plan to do? They're alive, for now. They are? Think of it as a form of deep sleep. I do not have much time, my powers are wavering. What are you going to do then? I looks at me in her ethereal state, betraying not a single emotion. I no longer recognize her. Jinha, is this what you wanted me to stop? I need to stop them from pursuing you by any means necessary. She turns that icy stare on me. Do you mean to kill them? That is a reasonable option. You can't do that. Do you hear yourself? These are the same people that threw you in a pit of snakes to die. You've said it many times yourself, we humans don't behave rationally, but humans do not truly change unless they are made to face extreme crisis. Their deaths will send a message to leave us alone in peace. I, please. What can I say to convince her? I know you may think I'm too weak for wanting to free these people. Some of them I do hate, even from before, but I... To do things out of fear of the unknown, or leaving others to get hurt while I run away. And, and my fr and then our friend is there too. Will you also? I takes a moment to respond when she does, her voice is even and calm. But it's a cold stillness, icy hollow like there's nothing underneath. You are not weak. You forgive these scum and let yourself be endangered for others. Such strength is far beyond mine. I am not like you, though. She raises her hand once and... I... I reach out to her and I am almost blown off my feet. We don't need to do this. Staggering, I stubbornly make my way closer. The energy surrounding her and repelling me seems to lessen somewhat as I get close. Can we just run away and leave this all behind? That would be nice, wouldn't it? My hand reaches out to her. Why don't we, then? We can start over anywhere. She reaches out and plates, places her hand in mine. I am pulled into her embrace. Warmth flows through me. I can feel eyes energy spilling into me everywhere our skin touches. I will tell you my secret. I. Her cheek touches mine as she whispers to me. For a small moment, I was able to tap into my true form and power. What? I could see the future. I saw so many derivatives of all potential futures, things that may be and may never be. Like what? There is no future where we will never be safe as long as I exist in their mind. They may see me as a human now, but some will figure out that I am the serpent they seek. How could that be? I will become a legend, both powerful, dangerous, and all-knowing. I will attract all sorts of people for all of eternity. So I figured out how to stop it for good. I am sure we can figure something out. But most importantly, I need to keep you safe, always on the run. Your life with me cannot be as it will not be a life worth living. What? To preser preserve all life, this is the only way. My powers have finally awakened in this form. What, what abilities did you gain? I can alter memories. I will erase everyone's memory of me when they travel that the energy will spread to others, dispelling those rumors once and for all. No, you can't mean. Please, don't make me forget you. 
I hold on to her so, so tightly, begging with her with my entire being. Anything but that. This is how it has to be. My influence is no good to you humans. Don't say that. You mean everything to me. You've helped me in so many ways. You've helped me evolve into a better being as well. I will eternally be grateful to you. Please, I... Thank you... For loving me. Her hand covers my eyes. I will always love you. I... Uh, the blanket almost falls off me as I sit up jerkily. What a rough dream. Though I don't remember what happened. Well, it's Brian now. I better get ready. The table is set by the time I arrived in the dining room. Ready to eat? Yep, I feel awfully hungry today. Great, let's get started. I'm about to grab some food, but pause, realizing Jin has placed her hands together. Oh right. How embarrassing of me. I follow suit and we have a moment of prayer. Okay, time to eat. Let me know later today if you want to eat anything special tomorrow. Oh, there's so many things though. I'll think hard on it. Your meals are the best. Jinha gives her famous shy smile. Do you really dislike praise? The only praise I need is getting to see your smile when you eat my meals. Doesn't saying that feel more embarrassing than receiving a compliment? I've yet to be disappointed. Do you have any plans for today? Hmm, I was thinking we can continue our lessons. Okay, we'll start after we finish morning chores. How odd. Oh, you're here? Done so quickly? Yeah, I finished cleaning any everything already. For some reason... Did you finish the garden stuff as well? Most of it. We have a good dinner prepared. I can't wait. Any particular characters you like to practice? Not really. Why don't you surprise me? Alright, let me think. Eh, this character set seems really hard. Take your time. I know you can do it. Alright, I'll do my best. I don't think this is even legible. All done? Why are you hiding it behind you? It's so ugly. This is why we practice. Don't worry, I'm sure it's not as bad as you think. She plucks it from behind me and looks over my work. So, what did I try to write out? <laughs> it's nothing really bad. None is very challenging. So the first one is... Leon Raha. You did a wonderful job with the second character. Have you practiced it before? Not that I remember. You seem really good at it. Really? How could you- how do you say the whole thing? Nan- Nan I? Two drop tones. Nan I. Sorry if I'm butchering this again. Perfect. Now tell me what it means. It means in love, or perhaps yearning for love, might be a better translation. Oh. Why would you make me write that? Shouldn't everyone learn how to write love? Uh, I guess. We can read romance stories later if you'd like. For some reason, I feel like reading love stories with a friend would make even the most dramatic tale seem more like a comedy. I'll think about it. Okay, why don't we continue the lesson? Yes, please. The rest of the day went by, as every day usually goes. Hmm? Jinha, what are you doing? What do you mean? Why'd you scoop three bowls of rice? Huh? There's only two of us, unless you're trying to tell me to eat more. Ah, my apologies, how unlike me. She scoops the rice back into the pot. I was wondering why there are three of these bowls out. That so? Well, I'll go prepare the, t prepare the table. Please do. That was a pretty great day. Even so, it was with that calligraphy lesson. Is she trying to tease me? Does she know that I've never been in love before? Why does talking about it embarrass me so much? 
It was never a big deal when I was younger. If anything, the other girls always used to tease me for not having anything to contribute to their boy-crazy talk circles. They also teased me plenty about An. Huh, I haven't thought about him for so long. Love sure can make people unreasonable, huh? It's getting late. Best I go to sleep. I lay back in bed, staring pensively at the ceiling. But... Something doesn't feel right at all. Maybe it'll go away if I sleep it off. That feeling embeds itself into my soul. Lynn. Yeah? You okay? It feels like I barely slept last night. Do you want to keep resting for now? Yeah, I'll try to get up in a little while. Okay, take your time. A hand taps me on my shoulder. Hmm? I've been calling out your name for a little while now. It feels like you're in a different place these days. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to space out on your lesson like that. Don't worry. I'll finish this up first. You want to take a break? No, if anything, I want to feel busy. I see. Each bite of food is always delicious, but I can't taste anything. Oh, is something not to your liking? No, your food is always wonderful, but for some reason it just feels duller to me. I haven't changed anything significant from the usual recipes, though. Yeah, perhaps I'm just not feeling myself these days. Are you coming down with something? The back of her hand feels nice and warm on my forehead. No fever. Hmm. No, Jinta, I'm sure I'm perfectly healthy. Then why does it seem as though you're getting worse? That's what I've been trying to figure out myself. Why don't I get when I give you why don't I give you something nice to drink before bed? It'll help you sleep better too. Thank you, sorry to have worried you. You had to bed earlier today, that's all I ask. I promise I will. Our life is perfect, right? What is this feeling? This void in my being. There's nothing I can complain about. It'd be m nice if such peaceful days could go on for eternity. What is wrong with me? Such urge drives me to f try and fill this void. Pacing around the room does nothing for me. And searching through everything in the room only intensifies these strange, unrelenting feelings. What could this be? An object hides within an unfamiliar cloth. Unwrapping it reveals a beautiful bowl, silver veins inlaid where it had once cracked. How odd. It looks like one of the rice bowls we normally eat out of. Why was it left in here? Why does it bother me so much? Tears start to stream down my cheeks, and yet I still don't know what is what any of this is. I inspect the bowl closely, running my fingers over the smooth and rough parts make, makes feel... Feelings of awe, fondness, and pain fills me in equal parts. I get it. I'm missing something important in my life. I cling onto the bowl. No, someone. Someone completely irreplaceable. How did I forget? I do my best to hold back my tears. But in the end, I, can, I only manage to cry myself to sleep. After all that, though, my, full, my soul feels much calmer. How did you sleep last night? I will admit it was rough, but I did manage to fall asleep. I see. Her gaze comes to rest on the new bowl on our table. Looks like you found something. I think it's very important to me. I don't remember why though. Maybe my memory has been bad lately due to my sleep problems. Do you mind if I see it myself? I nod, she picks it up carefully. Ah. Do, do you recognize it? Hmm, I don't think so. Oh, I was hoping that you could tell me something about it, at least. I have heard of this type of craftsmanship. It is called Kintsugi. To repair something that was once broken, in the process of making it better than before. That sounds rather nice. It is more of a form of art rather than a practical application. They also repair items with metal staples, 
but may not be as aesthetically pleasing. That aside, I do feel like you have something on your mind. Would you share it with me? Last night, it felt like I was missing something really important to me, but then I realized it. Let's have a good talk this time. I'm sorry to trouble you. I don't know what's wrong with me. Why do you say that? Because our life is perfect, right? Everything is just as it should be, but... I will admit, though, you haven't been your usual self for the last few weeks. What do you mean? You seem to have difficulty focusing, plus an unusually poor appetite and low energy. Eh, it's really been that bad? Has your sleep gotten any better? No, maybe a few hours at a time. Do you think I'm coming down with something? Or maybe... Maybe... Did I somehow manage to get cursed by a demon or something? Or is it that I've been engaged in some kind of immoral behavior and now I'm being punished? I don't believe that is the case. How do you know? We need to undergo some purification ritual. No, let's trust my intuition and experience. Well, in any case, something just doesn't feel right. Everything? Yeah. Hmm, you aren't entirely wrong. So we are being haunted by an evil presence. I could feel the goosebumps prickling on my skin. Oh no, nothing that... Um... Ma <laughs> malevolent. M -m malevolent. Though I do feel like we may be under some sort of spell. What makes you think that? My memories do not match up in quite a few places. It's a bit hard to explain. But I do remember everything. There's no lapses or hole in my memory. That would be your mind trying to forcefully put the pieces together in a way that makes sense. But why are we here in this home in the first place? We're here because you saved me from the traffickers, right? Yes, but we have memories dating back from before that happened. Why are you here? Now that she mentions it, I don't know. <sighs> My head is beset by a throbbing pain that gets worse every second I try to think through it. I try to focus on something else for now. I try to think about something, anything else, but some attempts just make the pain randomly spike. When it finally recedes, that odd fe feeling still lingers. Yeah, I feel like I should be scared, but I feel calm at the same, t same time. Oh? What seems to upset me more is this empty feeling in my chest, like there's a hole or something I can't fill. Do you know what's going on? I'm going to make you a nice cup of herbal tea to help you sleep. Jinha, tell me what it is. I need to confirm my suspicions first, then I will likely be able to tell you what happened. Do you trust me? Yes. Good. Prepare for bed while I get the tea ready. Nodding absentmindedly, I go through my, teen ru my routine without really minding what I'm doing. The only thing weighing on my mind right now is the suggestion that what should be my memories aren't. Feeling of apprehension keeps me uneasily awake while I wait for Jinha. I wish Jinha had told me what this feeling is. Even though she said, that's not it, I can't, heal I can't help but feel something's haunting my very soul. What is wrong with me? I really should have convinced her to give me an extra cup of that tea. Pacing around the room does nothing to ease my mood. And searching for everything in the room only intensifies that particular feeling of emptiness until the, feel, until the need to fill it consumes me. But my search comes up just as empty. That was no help at all. The drive to find what I've lost solidifies my uncertainty onto determination. Let's try here. I don't see anything new. Oh wait. What's that on the tapestry wood? A name? They must have been someone important. I better not get distracted. Let's try another room. Time to find it. I really do wish I knew what I was looking for. <sighs> definitely not going into Jinha's room. She definitely scolded me for being up. That only leaves one place. For some reason, that place scares me the most. While I'm sure I've been there before, I don't remember what it was I did up there. Take a deep breath. This is almost anticlimactic. I pick through everything carefully, trying my best to return each thing I disturbed back to its original state. 
Huh, for an attic, this is surprisingly tidy. That's how you can tell no kids lived around here. When did Jinha find the time to come up here and clean? Or maybe someone was here before. What could that be? Out of the corner of my eye, I spy something that I could not help but wonder about. It's the most messy thing in the entire room and rather out of place. Pulling on it reveals a bunch of papers stuffed into a drawer haphazardly. I took a little harder and managed to pull the whole thing out, some of it falling to the floor. What's with all this calligraphy? Why is it all the characters for love? What is... what's this character? One sheet is a little crumpled from the rest. The character on it isn't one I recognize. Eerie isn't quite right, but this sensation raises goosebump on my skin. I gather up all the sheets and quickly make my way back to my room. But my heart is racing so fast I can't rest at all. I close my eyes and start on the familiar breathing exercises. The tea seems to be finally kicking in and between it and the meditation I slowly fall asleep. Hmm, <sighs> seems rather... Seems late later today for once. I guess I finally slept well enough. Last night events come back in a rush, causing a spike of panic as I look around the bed to make sure it wasn't just a dream. The pile of sheets sit next to me. Oh, it's real, all right. Better tell Jinha my findings. While getting ready, my heart beats more frantically. Anticipation, nervousness. It really does seem like I know something deep down, but whatever it is, I can't figure it out. Good morning, did you sleep better last night? I definitely feel more rested. Ah, uh, I seem to unconsciously crush the sheets in my hand. I found something I need to show you. Jinha tits, tilts her head curiously, recognizing the type of paperwork I'm holding. Sure, let's take a look. She peruses the sheet carefully, looking over the characters, and then starts to line them up for some reason. It eventually dawns on me that she's arranging them in order of skill progression. At the end of the row, Jinha settles on the best-looking love character. She pulls a folded sheet from her robe and opens it, placing it alongside the final one. Hmm, they seem kind of similar, don't they? That would be because they're both yours. What? How is that possible? I've never been up there before. You mean the attic? Oh uh, yeah, I found it in the attic last night. So what you said is true then. Our memories have been changed somehow. This is as, this is clear at this point. The odds of us both forgetting and such conspicuous thing at all at at that is definitely unusual. Jinho holds up the one sheet that she'd put aside from the rest. This character, I don't know it, but for some reason it feels familiar. This one is not your work. Then who? You're still learning, but this is the same character you were writing the other day. Man. Yeah, that's that. Yes, though that was written by someone else. You are only familiar with the traditional form of this character, like this. Might be a bit harder for you to read without practice. Oh, I see. What is that? Hmm. K Koi. Old. It might be important. Jinha flips the sheet around and notices the writing in the corner. You can read this. Yeah, I don't know, though. Is this part of your tongue? Or your language? Uh, this is part of the writing system used in the Far East. What could this mean? Well, in any case, that was a useful exercise. Why don't we have our meal now? Jenna stands up quickly and makes her way towards the door, but I grab her sleeves before she can escape. Jinha, I need you to tell me everything now. With all due respect, I'm not sure if knowing the truth is your best option. Can't I make that choice myself? It will be... difficult. Manipulative through and through. I like- I'd like us to at least talk about it first. Very well. Thanks for trusting me. Of course. Jinha sits me at the table and tells me everything, all that's happened up to this point. It's the strangest tale I have ever heard. Shapeshifter, demon, goddess, immortality, and magic. Sounds like some sort of fable, but it was all real? 
and it all happened to plain me. Are you okay? I could see why you didn't want to tell me the story. It's bizarre to say the least. It did happen, but why me? I'm just a nobody. I would have to respectfully disagree. You may feel that way due to your lack of memories, but I've seen you grow so much even in just this short time. You have the chance to do anything now. You could choose to believe all I told you is just a silly story, which I would say, like to say is an acceptable option. The other option? To discover if the story is true. Everything Jin had told me sounds so surreal, but I can't deny that it feels like it puts together, puts things into place on some subconscious level. And so there's just one thing that's still bothering me. Will I be able to figure out what this one feeling is? My hand reflectively grasped at my chest, clenching at the fabric of my top. Most likely, but it may come with a lot of tribulations. Even so, you still wish to know? I have to admit, I'm kind of afraid of what I, whatever I learn. But I feel like, even so, that's going to be a lot of wonderful new things to look forward to as well. I take you already decided your path. Honestly, it doesn't feel real. But if it's a fairy tale, anyways, I... I want to decide my own fate. You heard her yourself. Hmm? I track Jinha's gaze to a very empty corner of the room. Looking in the same direction, I find absolutely nothing. The only conclusion I could arrive at causes my nerves to start sparking. Jinha, is there a ghost in the room? Oh no, nothing like that. You just can't see her, that's all. That's what a ghost is. But I can't see her. That's not what determines a ghost. She is alive and well. You cannot see her because she does not exist in this realm. That still sounds like a ghost. Who, who is she? That is a complicated question. She is er, uh, sort of the landlord of this house. Eh? She has been watching us this entire time like a creepy stalker? She now starts laughing, waving her hand repeatedly. What's wrong? She's uh, not very pleased by what you said. Now she wants to kick us out. Whoops. <laughs> How long has she been here? I've been only able to see her this morning. Why is that? I found this buried in the garden. I reach out for it instinctively before Jin Ha can stop me. Wait, why does this look so familiar? I'm expecting it so intensely that I almost don't notice when an unfamiliar hand grabs the ornament back. Ah, oh. hiding behind Jin Ha, I sneak peeks at the not ghost who is gracefully applying the clip to her hair. Huh. I was about to warn you about that. S sorry though I do wish you'd warn me about- Hmm? My heart won't stop racing. She's so pretty. You uh, said that out loud. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm sorry for my rudeness. My name is Lynn. We've met. No time for introductions. We have a problem. What is it? It takes too much power to ma maintain this connection. I won't be able to sustain it, sustain it much longer. She will have to unlock her memories on her own before the spell becomes permanent. Are you ready? Uh, this is so fast. I need more time to process all of this. You need to trust me. What if I mess up? This is a one-time opportunity, no pressure. But I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't remember you, after all. Deep down, you will find the answer here. She presses her palm on the center of my chest. Even if you fail, you could still find your happy ever after. It's not a bad outcome either way. A hand tightens on my chest, my desire to remember fighting with waves of fear. Close your eyes now. Can I trust her? I take one last look, trying my hardest to remember her. And squeeze my eyes shut. I believe in you. Something warm presses softly on my forehead. Was that... a kiss?